Our guest on Reggae Makosa is master drummer from Ghana, Obo Addy. Welcome to Reggae Makosa, Oba. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oba, I heard that there is a city in Ghana called Tema that is a sister city to San Diego. And you received the key to the city in San Diego recently. Yeah. Yeah, Tema is a very beautiful city. It's one of the new cities. Uh, I, we call it new city, but it's not new. It was there. Tema was there, and people in Tema were there. But when we had our self-government, our um, uh, first head of the state building and a harbor there, very beautiful harbor there, very good harbor, and it's an uh, international harbor. I think it's about 20 miles from the across center of where I was born to the uh, to Tema City Harbor, they call it. And I'm glad to be here to receive the key. And I think this is not going to be only receiving the key of a sister city, but I think it's going to be another step of uh, peace in the world. Because if all citizens of the United States will uh, get a uh, sister cities and present keys to the people, and that's kind of means we're getting together, the whole world is getting together. So I think it's not going to be only giving a key. And I will take that in mind, you know. Uh, I love that. It's a peace award then, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's what I mean. So, so does Tema look like San Diego? Yeah, sure. It looks. When I first came here about three, four years ago, and I look around, uh, you remember when we first met uh, right. at your restaurant? When we were coming, I saw the beach. Uh, we got lost a lot of We exit earlier, so we were around other places on the beach. And uh, it looks like Tema. And I told the woman that I was with, I said, this place look like Tema. Tema. And, and I was so surprised when you called me telling me that I was going to receive the key because there's a sister city in Ghana called Tema. You know, I just, I just can't believe it. You know, I just can't believe it. It looks like it. It looks like Tema. They look, they, they both look alike. So you were born in Accra, Ghana? Yeah, I was born in Accra, in the city of Accra. Why didn't you take up a, a, being a medicine man since your father is a medicine man, a Wanchi priest? You took up music, Oba. That seems very unusual. You didn't follow in the same tradition of your father. Well, because my father uh, uh, celebrated his uh, ritual ceremonies with drum, drumming, dancing, and singing. And we have about 55 brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And all the men are very good drummers. True that. We didn't go to school to learn. I didn't. You can't learn all this drumming and things, especially our traditional music and culture. You can't learn it. You won't be able to learn it in the university or school. Um, did you have to be born in a house where it happens? So it seems like I took the right part, but I didn't learn the medicine. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit of medicine. You know, I can heal a little kid when a convulsion or fever or no. We all know many people know about that. But um, to become a yeah, because he is too. It's not uh, just the medicine. It's just not the herbs. But there's some spiritual things involved. Man, he possessed and. And, and predict what will happen next week or what will happen the next time, our future, and heal the sick through herbs. And uh, he puts this and say, go to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the forest and pick this herb and we heal this person. And, you know, but I didn't learn that. But the drumming part uh, and the singing part, which my mother was doing, was the lead singer of my father's group. Um, I, 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 I took that part. When did you, when did you come to the U.S. and what brought you here? Obo? I was 1973, I think, when um, after the Olympic Games, we found an agent in England who decided to manage the group, and uh, and he sent us here uh, to to North Wales, you know, somewhere like in Seattle, Washington State's cultural enrichment programs, and we worked there, and uh, we went around a little bit. And you know we did that for four years. We came and went around like we went east coast and and afterwards I found that um, I have my creative ideas too. And so if I come to America, America being a worldwide uh, music scene, I might be able to put my music all over because I was known. And, you know my country was very popular. I was on TV for two years. You know playing Ghana broadcasting band. And so that's why I came down here. And I decided to start it from a little place. It takes a long time, but I'm, I'm spreading it. You sure are, Obo. You're spreading <laughs> it to the La Paloma Theater. Yeah. It's your second time at the La Paloma Theater, and I know North County is so happy for you to perform. 
and also you're doing a drum workshop and that drum workshop is really filling up. Oh yeah, great. I love like to teach people how to drum because it used to be a long time ago, you know, people in America wouldn't play with their hands. And I always congratulate the Cubans who brought their hand drum in here. Because it was very hard when I first came here, people don't want to hear the drum with their hands, but now everybody. And I want to show people that uh, there's nothing in this world that you want to do. Or another human being will be able to do it. And then another human being wouldn't be able to do it. You know, you can play drum with, if I can play drums with my hands, you can do it. You will be able to do it. So, so I want people, I want to prove to people that not everybody can play, do it whatever he wants to do or she wants to do. Uh, Master Drummer, how do you describe your music? Um, my music, I describe it as uh, happy music. And also I say it's uh, African modern music because what I do is I take traditional music and put some rhythms to it that uh, people in, that will make people in America happy. I'd say me, my music I, I, is a music that also can bring people together, can make people happy, and and um, take discrimination away from human beings, and let's, and then we say we are all human beings. Oh, but do you feel that African music is healing? Yeah, what well, traditional music, some of traditional music is healing. And since you're using some of the spiritual rhythms in back in, in you know, in conjunction with maybe uh, American funk or jazz, which are originally from Africa anyway, uh, the, that spirit is, is still in it. So it can heal, and it heals. Where do you see African music going with Paul Simon's new album, Graceland album with African? Uh, Lady Smith Mbasa, Black Mbasa playing with Paul Simon from South Africa, it, and King Sunny a Day coming um, May 27th yes. in San Diego. I mean, it just seems like African music is really coming and being recognized in America. Where do you see African music going? Well, African music um, was a rally all over the world, so far as jazz is concerned and American music is concerned. but. Uh, this is about time, it's about time now for people uh, to know. True. Before, people didn't know that it was African music. It was, but it's about time that people, people should know. And that's what is happening. Uh, before I came here, uh, somebody in my family told me that they were waiting for some music in the whole world. And that thing would start from America. But it's gonna be African music. And Lots of Africans will come with their music, but they're waiting for somebody. He didn't tell me that that, uh, that person is, but he told me that. I told a few people about it, but I'm not saying it's me, but I don't know who that person is. The person who will spread the music properly, he hasn't come yet. And, uh, and it's gonna, again, the person will come, not, not very long. But it's gonna be, this is about time that we gotta know that African music is the key of the music that we enjoy now. In mm -hmm. reggae, uh, jazz, funk, you know, rock and roll. The basics of everything. Yeah. Do you feel that um, people's minds will be changed through art and music? That would be the revolution instead of guns. Uh, do you think that with music, like with reggae music and African music, there will be a change of consciousness through that music? Uh, I know Fela Ransom Kunte from Nigeria said that uh, music is the weapon. That is the, that is the weapon. Music and art is the weapon of the future. Oh yeah, that's, it's true. It's true. It's, it's music, and, and, and that's what, uh, that's, like I said, my music will bring people together. It's, it's everybody's music, our music in general, brings people together. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know much about American history, but if, uh, from what I can see or what I heard, if it weren't had been music, uh, black people wouldn't mm -hmm. have been anywhere in this country. True. Because it was a long time ago, of course, that uh, people, didn't know, people didn't know what they were doing. But the music was the music who brought them a little bit to, um, to limelight and say, mm -hmm. to give them a chance to, to start getting what they deserve or money or whatever. 
And so, so it's music. It's still it'll be going on and it's going to go on and go on and, and change so many things in, in the world, in the whole world, not only here. A few moments ago, you mentioned uh, jazz. What has been the jazz influence on your music and how did that come about? Well, first, I didn't know there was any jazz influence on my music because what I was doing, I, take, uh, I was taking a lot of uh, my, um, my, my language and put notes on it. And I take, um, like I took so many of the traditional rhythms and, and then put sounds to it. And I try to write sounds that I've heard before, like when I was six years old or five years old. But people hear it that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to stop those people to, from saying that it sounds jazz. Because I think most jazz musicians did that. They went to Africa and take uh, some African rhythms and put something to it and call it their own. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. At least the music has name. Some, something. So they're calling it something. Mm -hmm. So that's the, I can say that's the influence, you know. The idea of uh, writing jazz music in this country, I think that's the same ideas I'm using writing my music. I take my father's spiritual music and, and, and then put sounds to it and try to make it more sound like something. But still, it sounds jazz. In the Do you have any uh, favorite jazz or any uh, favorite American musicians that you listen to? I like Miles. <laughs> I like his ideas. Uh, and that's what I always give example to my musicians. Like Miles says, he cannot go back and play what he was playing about 30 years ago. And he, played, he can't do that with his young, young guys now. Speaking so, of Miles Davis. Yeah, he's, he's very great, he's great. And uh, I like Stevie Wonder and, uh, and uh, and uh, I like um, most uh, Ray Charles. I don't know why, maybe because they're blind. But I like their soul. <laughs> That's great. Obo, um, do you teach children? And also, I, well, I Oh, like sure, yeah. But I've been doing that a lot in oh. Portland. That's what I've been doing. I'm going from school to school. I think I've been almost all Northwest schools. <laughs> Just with little kids, high schools, and, yeah, and middle schools, and, and like, you know, little, little ones, like six all years over. old, five years. Yeah. Bobo Addy, we would like to thank you for joining us on Reggae Makosa, and we will see you very soon in San Diego. Thank you very much, and good night. Good night.